Former Prime Minister Tony Abbott made headlines this week calling for a massive cut in immigration numbers. He argues it will help wage growth, make housing more affordable and take the pressure off our infrastructure. But is this really the case? Chris F. Wright is a senior lecturer at the University of Sydney Business School and we're also joined by Macro Business Chief Economic Econ Economist Leith Van Onselen. Uh, good morning to you fellas, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Now I'll start with you Chris. Uh, migration has certainly been part of Australia's growth strategy for years now. Are we going about it the right way? Uh, thanks Peter. Well, yeah, migration, an increase in migration or uh, other forms of population uh, brings more ec economic activity into a country, you know, more people spending more on goods and services. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll all be better off overall. It's up to government policy to really manage that process. And we've seen in recent years governments make various changes to immigration policy to focus much more on skilled migrants, uh, people with higher skills who have uh, your high earners and who pay high rates of income taxation as a result and who uh, pay a lot more to government revenue and to the budget than they take through um, government services and welfare. So. Uh, you know, the current policy settings, they're not perfect. More could be done and there are some challenges. But I think overall the, the process has been, has been managed in a way that's, um, that's pretty good for the country as a whole. Leith, can I ask your opinion on this? I mean, do you think a bigger Australia is better off? Yeah, look, I think uh, politicians and economists tend to focus too much on the economic impacts and they don't concentrate on quality of life and, uh, and living standards. Now, over the past 12 years, Australia's immigration intake has been running at roughly triple the historical average. And this has meant that Australia's population has increased at 2.5 times the OECD average. Now this obviously has a, has a detrimental impact on Australia's environment through more pollution and more land clearing, etc. We're also seeing the, the pressure on livability in the major cities. Um, roads and public transport are increasingly crush loaded. We've got uh, overloaded schools and hospitals. And of course, people have been asked to pay more for smaller housing and to live in high-rise apartments. So I think this, this debate is really about livability and quality of life, and both are going backwards uh, as long as we... Both will go backwards as long as we maintain such high levels of immigration. So, well, so I mean, what do you put that down to? I mean, you do touch on a few of those issues there. I mean, the current levels responsible for low wage growth, uh, that is what Tony Abbott's suggesting this week, unaffordable housing and clogged infrastructure as well. I mean, they are valid points, but surely they can't all be attributed to migration. There must be uh, some fault here for government policy. Yeah, look, but, I mean, obviously uh, running a migration intake that's triple the historical average is poor policy. Uh, we did so well for, for 116 years since Federation at net overseas migration at about 70,000. And, and for some reason, the government decided to triple it. Um, didn't give voters any say whatsoever. And, this is, and, and we're now reaping what we sowed in infrastructure pressures, housing pressures and also downward pressure on wages. Um, Chris, Tony Abbott's own colleagues have um, told him to basically zip it on this one. I mean, is this, is this just an argument to create fear about outsiders? To some extent it is. I mean, I think it's, uh, you've got to question Tony Abbott's motives, but um, in terms of it's allowed him to get back into the front pages uh, of the daily media. But, um, you know, some of his arguments are, are a bit spurious. Like look, looking at the wages issue, uh, the Reserve Bank recently came out with an assessment of uh, the factors that are contributing to slow wage growth. The biggest factor was uh, high rates of underemployment, people not working as many hours as they'd like. Another factor that they pointed to is uh, the weak bargaining power of workers. Uh, employers, due to changes in industrial relations policy over the past 20 years, really have the whip hand. Uh, we, if we look at our migration intake, it's pretty evenly spread across the labour market. It, is, there, it might be having some impact in, in particular industries where it's concentrated, but, but it's, its contribution is marginal. There's a lot of other things at play. Uh, it's un unfair to say that migration is having a big impact upon wage, wage can growth. I, can I respond to Chris's point there? Yep, yeah, go for it. Yeah, look, the Productivity Commission has released modelling in 2006 and 2016, both of which showed that uh, immigration does push down the wages of... Uh, incumbent workers. The Bank of England and also Cambridge University has released uh, studies showing that immigration pushes down the wages of UK workers. Uh, it's pretty, pretty basic economics. Obviously, if you're going to increase the supply of labour each and every year through migration, you're going to increase competition in the workplace and you're going to reduce workers' bargaining power, which is therefore going to push downward pressure on wages.
Look, if it's only, if, only if it was that simple, the Productivity mm -hmm. Commission's uh, studies that list side of that forecast, th there are predictions of things that haven't happened yet. Um, it's not um, really um, reliable to, or it's not really, uh, really? fair at so all. It's the not Productivity really fair to... Commission's not reliable? And what about the Bank of England? That was actually, yeah. an, empiric that was actually an empirical study. That's of the UK labour market. The UK's immigration settings are very different and its labour market institutions are very, very different to Australia. You can't say that just because one thing happens in the UK, it happens in Australia. There's no so authoritative we... studies in Australia to show really? that immigration so pro... negatively contributes to wage So growth. the Productivity Commission's massive <laughs> reports on immigration in both 2006 and 2016 aren't authoritative? It's a forecast. It's not a study of what's happening now what's happened before all right just perhaps that's good good lively debate and this is exactly what's been going on over here in, in australia over the past couple of days um since uh, tony abbott's um um comments. column column mm. comments and columns on, on the australian this week but uh, thanks for coming in fellas uh, great to talk to you you're welcome uh, it's it has always been a hot topic here um migration immigration levels and i tend to think it will be for some time absolutely thanks, thanks.